in a poignant address at a gathering marking the solemn six-month milestone since Hamas's assault on Israel, Pierre Poiliev, a stalwart conservative figure, delivers a resolute condemnation of terrorism, both domestic and international in scope. His words resonate with fervor as he shines a spotlight on the egregious acts of violence perpetrated by Hamas. Poilievre underscores the imperative for decisive measures to combat the scourge of terrorism and ensure the security of communities, with a particular emphasis on the safeguarding of Jewish communities, both within the borders of Canada and across the globe. Don't miss, what is the main focus of Pierre Poilievre's speech? How does he propose to address terrorism and hate within Canada? What specific actions does he advocate for regarding the conflict involving Hamas and Israel? Let my people go! Let my people go. Liberation, a fervent call for relief, echoes deeply with conservative principles centered around emancipation from tyranny and oppression, particularly in safeguarding the Jewish community against the looming menace of Hamas. It is an honor to stand with you here today, friends of humanity, Jews, Gentiles, people of all backgrounds, Canadians, all people of decency. It is an honor to stand with you here today, friends of humanity, Jews, Gentiles, people of all backgrounds, Canadians, all people of decency. In the realm of conservative ideology, there's a staunch conviction in the necessity of collective defiance against shared adversaries and inequities accentuating the significance of cohesion and harmony across diverse societal factions. To stand against the homicidal, genocidal, death cult that is Hamas, a death cult that must be destroyed so that we can free the hostages and restore peace for all. A death cult that must be destroyed so that we can free the hostages and restore peace for all. The pressing need to vanquish adversaries, securing the well-being and liberty of innocent captives, this endeavor safeguards lives while fostering tranquility and steadiness. I'm joined by the great common sense conservative candidate Roman Babber, who is on the stage today. A proud Jew and a strong voice for his community and for all communities. Six months ago, plus one day, on October 6th, what did we have? We had a ceasefire. What did we have? Hamas was governing in Gaza. Israel was not even in Gaza. Israel had withdrawn its population and its forces from the Gaza territory. And Gaza was ruled over by the iron fist of Hamas in remote control by the tyrants of Tehran, the dictators in Iran who've been supplying Hamas with its weaponry, its logistics and intelligence. And Israel had kept its borders relatively soft so that Palestinians could even cross the border and work on the, on, on the Israel side, bringing home a living for their family. And in this atmosphere, where there was a ceasefire, where ha Gaza was not controlled in any way, shape or form by Israel, an unprovoked attack was unleashed on October 7th, designed to, com to commit the maximum human and civilian devastation in acts of cruelty that can... An unprovoked attack was unleashed on October 7th, designed to commit the maximum human and civilian devastation in acts of cruelty. The brutality and unfairness of the assault is imperative to evoke empathy towards the victims and safeguard the lives of the innocent from malevolence. ...not even be spoken from this stage with sadistic delight by those who undertook them. The Israeli government and the Israeli people had not only the right, but the obligation to defend themselves and to fight back and lead to the destruction of Hamas. And here we stand, six months later, families continue to be tormented by the loss or captivity of their loved ones. Many have already been killed. The Families continue to be tormented by the loss or captivity of their loved ones. Many have already been killed. In the realm of empathy and solidarity lies our commitment to those grappling with the repercussions of violence and bereavement, recognizing the profound human anguish and devastation born out of conflicts. Biggest attack on the Jewish people since the Shoah. 
and may all those that have been lost, may their memories be a blessing to us all. May they not have died in vain. May they not have died in vain. In moments of loss, we find solace in the fervent desire for purpose and fairness, celebrating the courage of those who defend liberty and oppose oppression. May we have the courage to stand with them abroad. And, 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 and may we also have the courage to stand up against the violence and extremism at home. May we have the courage to stand with them abroad. And may we also have the courage to stand up against the violence and extremism at home. Embracing conservative principles entails fostering strength, resilience, and unwavering vigilance to safeguard against external adversaries and combat internal radicalism. I believe in freedom of speech. I believe in freedom of speech. In a democratic society, the vitality of open discourse and the vibrant exchange of ideas reign supreme, underscoring the essence of conservative values championing individual rights and freedoms. I believe in freedom of expression. I believe in freedom of expression. In upholding freedom of expression, I staunchly defend the liberty of individuals to voice their perspectives, even if dissenting or contentious. I believe you can express any opinion that you want whether or not it is one with which I disagree. But that does not include the right to firebomb synagogues, to harass Jewish school, school children, to go outside of Jewish hospitals and terrify the patients coming in and out. But that does not include the right to firebomb synagogues, to harass Jewish school children, to go outside of Jewish hospitals and terrify the patients coming in and out. Allegations of aggressive and menacing conduct demonstrate solidarity with those affected by such actions, simultaneously upholding the traditional values of maintaining lawfulness and safeguarding at-risk societies. That is not freedom of expression. Nor does it include the right to finance, recruit, and organize for a terrorist group. We know that these uprisings, these anti-Semitic outbursts in Canada are not spontaneous. They are well orchestrated. They began almost instantaneously after, after the October 7th attack. And we know that there are 700 IRGC terrorists in this country who are legally operating. This is the same terrorist group that murdered 55 Canadians by shooting down PS Flight 752. And yet, all these years later, they are legally operating. 700 of their agents are le legally operating. Justin Trudeau, shame on you. Now, common sense conservatives will continue a relentless campaign to fully criminalize the IRGC and all the related terrorist organizations. We will fight to remove the bureaucracy to get funds to protect shuls against violence and terrorism so that you can be safe in your places of worship. We will fight to remove the bureaucracy to get funds to protect shuls against violence and terrorism so that you can be safe in your places of worship. In our commitment to safeguard religious institutions, we pledge to foster understanding and support for the Jewish community, prioritizing their well-being and peace of mind. We will stand up and fight back against anti-Semitism on our university campuses. And we on the global stage, we, we will always be a voice for peace. And we on the global stage, we will always be a voice for peace advocating for a world united in tranquility and equilibrium, fostering understanding towards individuals impacted by strife, and advocating for peaceful resolutions to global discord. We do believe in the eventual creation of a Palestinian state living in peace next to a Jewish state. We do believe in the eventual creation of a Palestinian state living in peace next to a Jewish state. In the intricate web of conflict, lies the profound yearning and fundamental rights of every stakeholder, recognizing the shared aspiration for harmonious cohabitation between Israel and Palestine. That said, that said, we know that the only way for that to happen is for the full destruction of Hamas. That said, that said, 
we know that the only way for that to happen is for the full destruction of Hamas. In contemplating the plight of those ensnared in the throes of violence and oppression within Hamas, it becomes imperative to eradicate the scourge of terrorist factions to pave the path for enduring tranquility across the region. We must destroy Hamas. We must return the ho hostages. We must destroy Hamas. We must return the hostages. In advocating for swift action to safeguard the vulnerable and reinstate order, it is imperative to underscore empathy towards those afflicted by Hamas's deeds while simultaneously affirming a staunch dedication to upholding justice and ensuring security. And we know that the, the Jewish people, the Aboriginal, the, the Aboriginal people of Israel who have been on the land for thousands of years will be there thousands of years from now. Celebrating Purim, celebrating Shabbat, celebrating Passover, and the voice and the echo will always go out. Am Israel Chai. Thank you very much. In a fiery address, Pierre Poilievre emphasizes the pressing necessity to confront the menace posed by Hamas's terrorist operations. By advocating for the cause of liberty and security, Poilever positions himself as a stalwart defender of conservative principles and a staunch advocate for human rights. Through his impassioned plea for decisive measures against terrorism and anti-Semitic atrocities, he endeavors to mobilize backing for his political platform, underscoring the paramount significance of safeguarding communities and nurturing peace, both locally and globally. In the realm of discourse, Pierre Poilievre's vocal condemnation of terrorism and hate both domestically and internationally resonates profoundly, aligning seamlessly with conservative principles of safeguarding security and upholding moral clarity. His stance appears to emanate from a personal ethos, underscoring his unwavering commitment to confronting threats and championing ethical conduct. Poilievre's portrayal of the Israel-Hamas conflict as a quest for authenticity and liberty in the face of oppressive forces undergoes scrutiny. Analysts construe his advocacy as a plea for the Jewish community's right to self-determination and security amidst looming dangers. Delving into the emotional terrain, Poilievre adeptly garners support by tapping into fear, indignation, and solidarity, dissecting the visceral impact of his rhetoric. Employing evocative language and imagery, he skillfully harnesses primal fears and moral convictions, subtly shaping audience perception and stirring emotions. Poilier's resolute stance against Hamas and his endeavors to combat anti-Semitism domestically draw commendation. Evaluators opine that his advocacy for bolstered security measures and the criminalization of terrorist entities aligns with democratic precepts of upholding law and order. Criticizing the Justin Trudeau administration's handling of security concerns, Poilievre's narrative underscores a proactive approach to navigating intricate geopolitical challenges. Such transparency underscores Canadians' entitlement to comprehensive insights into investigative endeavors and endeavors toward bipartisan resolutions to national security perils. What do you think?